In the last video, we learned all about partial orders and how to draw a Haas diagram. Uh, and so in this video, we're going to learn a lot of vocabulary that applies to partial orders. Uh, being a topic in the field of graph theory, there's a lot of vocabulary associated with partial orders, uh, so I'll do our best to get through it as in the most interesting way possible. Um, so the first vocabulary is pretty straightforward. If x is partially ordered and x and y are elements of x, if x and y are related to each other in the partial order, we say that x is less than y and y is greater than x. The only reason these count as vocabulary words is because this is not the usual less than or equal to relationship in the sense of numbers. Um, these things can be sets, these things can be matrices, these things can be whatever we want. As long as there's a partial order, we can say x is less than y. Given a subset, of the partially ordered set. If x is greater than every element in that set, it is the greatest element, otherwise it is the least element. Finally, an element in a partial ordered set is minimal if it is greater than no other element, and it is maximal if it is less than no other element. I want to highlight that these words do not mean that it is smaller than every element. Being greater than no other element does not mean that you're smaller than every element, and we'll see that in just a minute. Um, if the minimal element is unique, we call it the minimum. And if the maximal element is unique, we call it the maximum. So let's see an example of these first round of vocabulary words. Let's take the partial order represented by this Haas diagram. All right, so we would say that the element A is less than the element B. And we would say that B is greater than A. That's not very difficult to imagine. Notice that in the Haas diagram, um, vertical position determines size, right? So since A has an edge going up to B, that means A is less than B. Consider the set CD, which I will highlight here. It's the set CD. The least element of CD is the element C. A is the minimum of this partial order. And so here's the part that generally gives people a hard time. Both B and D are maximal. All right, remember that I said maximal doesn't mean you're greater than everything, right? Neither B nor D are greater than each other, but it's also true that neither is less than another element. So since neither is less than something else, they're both maximal, but since we have two different maximal elements, we have no maximum. The maximum only exists if it is the lone maximal element. All right, moving on to another batch of words. We say that two elements x and y are comparable if either x is less than y or y is less than x. Uh, in a linear order, such as the less than or equal to ordering on a set of numbers, uh, every element is comparable, right? If you give me two numbers, I can always tell you which of the two is greater. However, if you take a set of subsets and you ask me are which is a subset of the other, that's not always a question with an answer, right? I could have two sets where one is not necessarily a subset of the other. So a partial order is linear if every pair of elements has one greater than the other. A chain is a set with a linear order. A linear order is said to be a well ordering if every subset of X has a minimum element. And the idea behind a well ordered set is that induction is possible. Right, all you need for mathematical induction is you need a place to start and you need an idea of something being your next object. So that's all you need is a well-ordered set to make that possible. So let's see another example. It's actually the same example. This partial order is not linear. Because, for example, B and C are not comparable. I could have said B and D instead. 
And one way you can tell visually that they're not comparable is there's no path from one up to the other, right? If I were going to go from B to C or vice versa, I'd have to travel down to A. And remember, we don't really travel down in a partial order. We only ever travel up. The set A, C, D forms a chain. because it is a set on which the order is linear. Here's our chain ACD. Uh, unrelated examples. The set of integers under the usual less than or equal to relationship is a linear order, but it is not well ordered. because there is no starting point, right? There's no smallest element. However, the natural numbers under the same relation are a well-ordered set. More vocabulary. Let X be a partially ordered set and let A be any subset of X. A lower bound of A is an element in X. I can't stress that enough, that the lower bound is not necessarily in the set we're talking about. A lower bound is an element of X, which is less than every element of A. The greatest lower bound, sometimes called the infimum, abbreviated GLB, is the maximum element of the set of the lowest bounds of A. All right, so here's the idea. We have a bunch of lower bounds Which of the lower bounds is the tightest? We talked about this back when we talked about big O relationships, right? Just because there are more than zero people in a room doesn't mean that zero is a good lower bound for that number. However, if I say there's more than 20 people in a room and there's actually 23, now you have a better idea of the number of people in the room. So when we have a bunch of lower bounds, it's a good um, exercise. Whenever we have a, set, a bunch of lowered bounds, we're often interested in which of those lower bounds is the best one. Uh, we have analogous definitions here for upper bounds and least upper bounds. The least upper bound is sometimes called the supremum and is abbreviated as the least upper bound LUB of A. Finally, a partially ordered set is a lattice if every pair of elements has a least upper bound and a greatest lower bound. All right, we're going to have a couple of examples. The first is this partial order. We're going to consider the set A, which is equal to B, C, D, G. So it is this parallelogram looking thing right here. The upper bounds of A are E and F. The reason being that the element E is greater than everything in the set A. Um, I can travel from anything in A up to E, so that means E is greater than all of those things. E is greater than C, E is greater than G, E is greater than B and D by virtue of being greater than C and G. The least upper bound of the set A is the smallest element of this set, which is E. The set has no lower bounds. There is no, no element in the partially ordered set X that is less than everything in A. Um, little a is less than B, but it's not less than D. Uh, little d is not less than B, so there's nothing in here that can be considered a lower bound, and therefore there is no greatest lower bound either. Since the set BD has no greatest lower bound, this partially ordered set is not a lattice.
All right. Let's see another example. Let's take a look this time at the set BDE. All right, the lower bounds of A are B, A, and H. A is a lower bound because it is less than B and it is less than D and E as well. Uh, H is less than A, so by virtue of transitivity, it's less than B, D, and E as well. And it's a little surprising to people that B gets to be an element of the set of lower bounds because it is also in A. But remember, the only requirement to be a lower bound is that you are either in A or in X, which is, of course, contains A. All right, so any element in X, including those in A, can be a lower bound. Therefore, the greatest lower bound of A is B, because it is larger than A and H. The upper bounds of A are F, G, I, and J, all of which are greater than the elements in the blue triangle. And the least upper bound is going to be F. Now, I want to make the comment here that J is kind of a load-bearing element, right? No, I don't want to make that comment. Since it turns out that for any one of the pairs of elements in this partial order, you can find a least upper bound and a greatest lower bound, this one is a lattice. And I want you to notice that the lattice kind of has the same shape you would expect from something called a lattice in real life. Like when I talk about a lattice, you think about some kind of cross hatching on maybe the side of a house. And sure enough, lattices look like that most of the time in partial orders. A strict partial order on a set X is a relation that is anti-reflexive, anti-symmetric, and transitive. The idea is that we're thinking of the relation X being strictly less than Y on the set of numbers. Finally, when X is a partially ordered set, a chain in X is a subset that forms a chain under the partial ordering of X. We just talked about chains a second ago. A maximal chain is a chain that is a subset of no other chain in X. So here's an example. Let's take a look at the partial order represented by this diagram. E is above B, so E is the greater element than B. So the maximal chains in this partial order are A, C, F, A, B, E, and A, C, D, E. So that's A, B, E, a, C, D, E, and A, C, F. And the idea here is that you need to be able to get from one minimal element to one maximal element. So the only minimal element is A. The only maximal elements are E and F. So E has to go up to F or to E any way it can, and you, the result will be a maximal chain as long as there's not an extra step you could have taken. Um, Notice also that I use parentheses for these because they are ordered. So whenever order matters, we tend to write things in parentheses. Um, and the other remark is that they don't all have the same length, right? They don't all have to. What's important is that you go from a minimal element to a maximal element, not the number of edges that you cross.